Hello and welcome to Jumble Lane. Today I'm going to fit a DCC decoder into this very small locomotive. The loco itself is an 040, it's number 18 and is very very small. I've looked at the instructions, it does say something about DCC. It, does, it says that it's DCC ready in the instructions but I believe it not to be. So uh, I think we'll open it up and have a look. The loco itself just clips apart. There's no screws, although the instructions do say there are screws that have been fitted to it. Uh, comes apart, but that instructions is for several different locomotives. So there we are, a very small locomotive, and inside not a lot of room to fit a decoder. So let's see what the options are. For choice of decoder, we are limited in size and this decoder here is a gauge master decoder. Uh, I've taken this out of an old loco that uh, we had and someone has cut the lighting cables, the lighting wires that come out of the plug and you can see the decoder itself is rather small um, but I think with the fact that there's not a lot of room there's nowhere for it to go that is a Lay's decoder it's uh, quite cheap um, around about ten or off eBay and they, they, they're pretty good they, they work well and they have connections for a stay alive capacitor if you want it and have four functions and serve well and a great contender against the uh, small uh, Hornby decoder that is sort of a fried TTS decoder um, not having sound so that again goes on the unwanted list I have got two decoders here and because I haven't marked them, labelled them or chucked them away I don't know if they're working or not working they're both the Hornby 8249 I think it is um, four function decoder and what I should be doing is, is putting one of these in I believe I can mount the decoder at the end of the motor in such a position um, there in this uh, position the cab itself comes down and fills this area there is a small area, a small pocket at the bottom and I don't know if I can get the decoder down inside there rather than there um, I shall play around with that what I won't be able to do is put a harness in there so it's, I can keep the plug and plug it in there just isn't room for all the cable to be bunched up or for a harness um, so I'm going to have to hardwire this one and I'm going to have to disconnect the wiring from the motor and normally when you convert a DCC, a DC train to DCC you take the capacitors out because they do have an effect on the decoder and they do uh, stop it working properly <clears throat> what I'm going to do because on another loco I did have a problem I'm going to leave the, the suppression in place until such time I've tested it and then if it doesn't work properly <clears throat> I shall remove it and then test it again 
Right, it's on the rolling road and what we'll do, we'll just put some pear into it and then see how it goes. And you see it's just straight on. And there's not a lot of control with this controller, so. You know it's a runner. In both directions. So, let's go about uh, fitting the decoder. Okay, now the decoder will fit in the small slot at the back edge of the motor looking down uh, into what is a hole. There does seem to be a slot there but I don't think that is for anything like the decoder or what they envisage whether it's a bracket but the cab um, that part slides just just down there and I'm hoping that there is enough room for this to fit in so what I'm going to do is carefully just put the wires to the side and see if that just sits in place and clips in, letting the wires come out the side and yeah that does seem to be clipped in nicely so and I just can see that maybe that sits down, I don't know if you can see that that decoder sits down inside there leaving just enough room for the wires so I think we'll leave it down in that little hole there I don't want to prod and poke it with anything sharp because it will just pull all the components off the circuit board but I think that's uh, going to fit in there nicely Just about. So, I've got to remove both the wires off the motor from the pickups, and that is a small one there, and on the end of this choke is a wire which comes off there. So, I'm going to cut that choke, that wire off that choke and I'm just going to desolder this one so those will be the, the black and the red that goes to the decoder and then remove this off the motor and that just leaves the suppression that was there before uh, I'm going to leave it on for now but if it creates a problem, then we'll also just cut those close to the uh, solder terminals. So let's just cut these cables as long as we, we can for now. And we don't need the white, we don't need the purple, we need the orange, we need the black, we need the grey, and we need the red. Now, the ones that we don't need, what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to cut them at slightly different lengths. And the reason for that is, we're going to make sure that when we cover them with um, heat shrink, 
that they don't short out with each other because when the heat from the heat shrink gets into the cable the actual insulation will to a degree shrink slightly and the cable underneath, the wire underneath will be exposed and if they're all the same length they will just short out so I tend to cut them at different lengths slide the heat shrink down so it covers them all and give that heat shrink a bit of a heat So it's nice and snug on the wires and keep them insulated from everything else. So our four wires, the red and the black will go to rail right and rail left. And in this case this wire here is our, just point it out, this wire here is our rail right, this one's our rail left. It doesn't really matter too much. People get hung up on this quite, quite a lot. But in reality, it doesn't matter too much. And the reason for that is that you can reverse the direction with a CV setting and if you get it wrong or you can just take the top off and reverse the connections to the motor it's not the end of the world and there's always a way around it so this is not a lesson in soldering but just the way I do it I put some heat shrink on the cable to begin with, twist the wires together, get a bit of heat into the wire, bit of solder and there you have it. I'm not into using vast amounts of flux all the time and the reason for that is I use resin core solder so it flux itself. Bit of heat shrink and that cable is now nice and neatly insulated so the same goes for the black cable make my life easier by sticking heat shrink on first I tend to use my thumbnail to uh, strip the wire but these tiny ones, if you use tools you've got a good chance of cutting into the conductors and what happens is sometimes you don't realise you've done that and when it comes to the time when you uh, put it all back together it's actually broken without you realising and you've ended up with uh, a broken connection that you're not realising because it's inside the heat shrink and again, a bit of heat for the heat shrink and shrink that down so the next one is the two conductors 
for the motor. Uh, you've got orange and grey, one's motor right, one's motor left. Whenever I follow the instructions it doesn't always work out that it's the right way around and the, the, the loco does go backwards. So what I'm going to do is orange motor right, grey motor left and just take it from there and see what happens. If it does go backwards I'll just take the top off and swap the cables around. It's no big deal. And when, you, when I solder to a terminal I like to tin the cables first just so uh, there's a bit of solder on the, on the cable. It's a nice easy connection to the terminal. And there's our four connections. We don't have to use any of the other conductors. Uh, we've got no lights on this, this loco. It's just going to be to operate the motor. So what I'll do is bring these cables neatly over the top of the motor and down the back. Fold the unused cables neatly in the top of the hole. And I'll use a blunt end of this paintbrush just to push them down and get them into there. So there we have it. And hopefully this will just sit back on in the intended place and clip into position. And clipped into place. Just about. So here we have it, our loco. I've just powered up my programming track and we'll sit the loco on the, lo on the programming track, set it for forward on loco number three. And forward is forward. is reverse. As you can see it's there now and wheels move nice and slowly nice and smoothly and there's a fair bit of control over it.
about collections.